What's up everybody, welcome to my build log here for the AOS 30 by Chris Rosser. You know the rules, one byte, one byte only. Actually, it's gonna be post build thoughts and comments first and then the build log second. Okay, so the AOS 30, this is a short and sweet build log that I've got for this because I recently did the AOS 25. This one's got an 04 air unit. So if you wanna see this build and flight footage, I'll put that up uh, around here somewhere, but they both kind of fly the same. So I didn't really do two whole separate intros for this because they fly nimble. This one was just repurposing guts from my Pavo 30 into this. And then this one was an almost complete build, obviously upgraded and put an 04 air unit into it. Um, I reused motors from my Pavo 25. Um, and then I put a new flight controller in here, the Speedy B AIO. Okay. So both of these fly pretty much the same. And on top of that, I'm actually going to be building an AOS 20 because if you haven't seen my build log on the Itsy Spider, this thing is super fun and nimble, but I did crash it recently and there is no support for replacement parts. So what am I supposed to do? This one has a 03 air unit in it and this is a really fun build, nimble, all of that great stuff. So probably what I'll do is I'll just strip off these like prop guards and this flight as is and then repurpose stuff over into it and then kind of build a second one. But um, if you're looking for something that's going to last crashes and have replacement parts that are print on demand because of CNC drones, right? These are a no brainer right here. I mean, nobody plans on crashing and breaking their quad, but it happens and it sucks when you can't you get through this and then you can't replace the parts when crap happens. Okay. At any rate, so this one was just repurposing parts from my Pavo 30. Overall, they both fly really good. I do have a little bit of jello I need to work out on this one, but I think it's just because the screws are a little bit too long. Um, all of this stuff has a TPU master pack download for different things. Okay, if you're trying to get an 04 air unit, you're gonna wanna look at this video so you can see how to install it into these uh, quads right here. But I made some special gummies that go around the outside that's in the TPU master pack. And then obviously um, he offers these you know, prop guards or the TPU for that. One of the other things, um, that I've been having issues with is I made these little riser pads right here. It kind of as a spacer between the motor uh, nut or the motor screw and the motors because I feel like the, the screws that are included are just like a millimeter too long, too close for comfort when you install them. So those are in the TPU master pack as well. But otherwise, the assembly, simple, straightforward, nice frame, all of that great stuff right here. Um, it is a pusher design. So you're going to want to make sure in beta flight that you understand how to flip the flight controller and rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, etc. But overall, that's pretty straightforward. A lot of that is covered in my AOS uh, 20, uh, 25 video there. Um, and then aside from that, the only post-build thoughts I have is because every time you build a new quad, you're learning something new. This is a really nice design, but it's a little bit of an open cage design on the inside. So what that means is as you're starting to cram all of the wires and the electronics on the inside, there's nothing in there that's like boxing everything in and keeping it safe from a prop strike or getting nicked, okay? So you are going to have to use a good amount of uh, either appropriate length of wire or a lot of zip ties to get things zipped and held in place. That's not usually that big of a uh, deal, but when you go back later on and you need to work on something, then you got to clip all the zip ties and you got to do all of the stuff. So there is that there. But aside from that, right, he's got some base presets and tunes for this. Yeah, they fly well right out of the box. Assembly simple and straightforward. And if you're getting something a little bit smaller, like an AOS 20 or a 25, you could probably get them uh, sub 250. And if you're putting in 03, 04 air unit, you won't even need an extra camera and then that's pretty good so this thing right here is coming in right around 500 ish grams if i use a one amp hour battery 1000 milliamps and then if i put like a naked gopro on top yeah we're close to 500 grams if you strip all of that down you're in the 400 ish range okay but aside from that uh enjoy the video let me know if you have any questions comments and concerns and enjoy the build log all right, everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at the AOS Cine 30 V5 by Chris Rosser right here. That's what this frame right here is. It's all deconstructed. And this one right here is actually the AOS 25, which is going to be a two and a half inch. Both of them are basically the same one, just slightly larger than the other. I just have this one loosely pieced together so you can get an idea of what that looks like so I could visualize as well. So we're not doing two complete builds from the ground up. I'm actually repurposing older frames or components into these ones just because it seems like something fun to do.
So this is the Pavo 30 Pro. I've had this a little over a year. It's been good. Um, it is plastic. It has, you know, crashed a couple times and broken. Um, it flies well. I don't know if I'm like super excited about it. One of the things that I don't like about the frame is that the way it holds the uh, camera in the front, I can never get enough up tilt and it actually, I can't get it to stay uh, tightened down enough in there because of the way the TPU holds the camera. So it tends to slip and slide. So that's kind of one of the main reasons I'm getting rid of it. I've also had some issues, some electrical issues. I don't know if it's related to the frame or not. We're about to find out, but I'm gonna repurpose everything in here. Now the difference between these two, okay, this is just a standard Cinewhoop right here where everything pushes down, where these frames here are actually going to be pusher frames. So this is going to all be inverted, right? And then it's gonna be like that. So we're gonna start tearing this thing down. I'm gonna put it into here. Yeah, we've got all the components, some really nice uh, carbon fiber here. This comes from uh, CNC drones or whatever. Um, they shipped it out really well. And then they, Chris Rosser also has some TPU um, bumper guards here that you can print out. So these will connect through a couple of these standoff holes right here. I feel like once we get this all locked up here and put on, I might have to use a little bit of craft glue at the very ends right here to keep this uh, locked into place, but that's not really that big of a deal. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna weigh the frame with the bumper guards and everything just to get a regular weight on that. Then I'm going to weigh this entire quad right here and see what that looks like. And then we're just gonna start to deconstruct it. I'm gonna put the frame together and we'll start transferring all the bits and pieces. Okay, so if we just start putting all the different bits and pieces here up on the scale, we're gonna get a total weight, see what everything looks like with all the components, the nuts, bolts, etc. Yes, and then this right here. So we are at 109 grams with all the hardware and a set of bumper guards. And if we take the Pavo 30 Pro and we put that there, this is coming in at 305 grams. So I guess we're gonna see, can I lose a little bit of weight by going carbon fiber? I don't know what's about to happen, but we're about to find out. So we've got everything torn down. I got the Caddx Vista up here. We've got the Beast AIO down here, hooked with all the motors and everything, just as you would expect. So the first thing we're gonna do is build the camera cage but this is everything that's in the bag. You might use some of it, all of it, but it's got these really nice aluminum camera protectors right here as part of the cage. You get some gummies that are built in and this is gonna be perfect for uh, O3 air units. Uh, if you want a hard mount 19 millimeter, we've got this. I'm not sure exactly which one I'm gonna use yet, but I'm just gonna start putting the pieces together here. And then if you wanted to put like a nano camera or something even smaller, like a 14, um, you could download a STL file and print with TPU if you needed to cover up that gap as well. So when it comes to the camera cage, what's really nice about the components is that they're symmetrical so there's no inside or out as of yet they're both exactly the same doesn't matter now when you take the first little piece of uh, carbon fiber right here there is two sides to this so you're gonna notice that there is a countersunk side here that the screw is gonna go into and then on the other side it's just kind of flat so you want the countersunk side facing up that's gonna go inside of here. And if you're only using this for the O3, you're gonna be using the gummy like so, then you only need these little itty bitty screws that are included. Otherwise you could use the longer ones if you happen to be using, um, where is it at? This one over here, if you're gonna hard mount something, you would put this on top and then that would go through both of these, okay? But we're just gonna go with this one. So I'm gonna use the small screws on this. And then once that's done, then you can just take the gummy and then rest it in this slot right here. But you're gonna have to decide whether you want the single hole to the front or to the back, and it's gonna really depend on whether you're using a, a Caddx Vista or if you're using an O3 air unit. Um, but when it's all said and done, this is actually on both sides gonna be facing inward, okay, and sandwiching the camera here. So we got those two pieces assembled for right now. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, when those two components come together, like so, and then once that's done, you just take the little gummy in there and you stick it inside. And like I said, we can always come back later and flip it around and change it if we need to, but we'll deal with that once we get to the actual camera part of the build. So next we're gonna start putting everything on the main plate right here. And remember, this is actually going to be inverted and everything's gonna be hanging upside down. So we'll talk about that in beta flight later. Okay, but you're gonna notice that there are some press nuts that are already put in here, which is really nice. And this is what helps with the V5 part of this and anti-vibration and all of that frame resonance stuff that I don't even understand, okay? Now, in his video, he starts to put the standoffs on first. I'm gonna do that last or a little bit later because I want freedom to work right here without having to like move around standoffs, okay? So you've got your 25 by 25 mounting right here. You want these press nuts facing up. So 
that you're mounting everything on top versus the smooth side. So if it's feeling smooth, that is not the part that you want to mount your electronics to here. So we're going to do that. But what you will notice is that there is a front and a back, okay? So this cutout right here on the back side, this is actually for a panel mounted uh, XT60 connector if you want that. And you just notice these two little holes here in the front. Let me see if I can get it to reflect off of that. There we go. Okay, that is actually going to be for the camera cage. So this is going to be the front of your quad. So I'm going to start with some of these long screws. I'm to put these up through here and then we should be able to put the stack right on top of that. So now I've got those four screws and once again those were the longer screws that are put in there. So now I can start to lay this down. This is the front of the quad. It isn't a diamond pattern so once I start to flip all of this over, I guess we're going to be able to see what this kind of sort of looks like. I'm going to know that probably if the uh, XT60 connectors towards the back that's going to be an indication of where the front is. But if you're building this from scratch with a brand new uh, all electronics and everything like that, you should be able to see that the arrow, it's kind of like right here in the corner right here. I don't know if you can see that, but that is gonna be pointing towards the front of the quad. So this lines up perfectly. All right, now that we got this on here, this is actually fitting perfect. All I have to do is just put the plastic nuts on and then that'll lock it right down. And then the next thing we have to move on to is just the motors. So the good news is that I had plenty of motor wire from the previous build that I am not short by any means. Actually, I have too much wi motor wire and I'm trying to decide whether or not I actually wanna go through the process of desoldering this, clipping it and making it perfect, or if there's a way I can just zip tie everything out of the way and call it a day. All right, so I've got the motors mounted up and I think I'm gonna roll with it for right now and then if I wanna fix it later on, um, and come back and you know shorten the length, I will do that. But for now, I'm gonna leave it the way it is, just zip tie it down around the way and see how this thing flies. Um, but one thing I did leave or print or carry over from the Pavo 30 are these little things right here. These are basically like motor landing pads I had on the Pavo 30. So that way when it landed, it wouldn't scrape the bottom of the frame. And the reason I'm keeping those because the motor bolts or you know whatever you want to call them screws are about a millimeter too long in my opinion for this frame so they're just poking out of the bottom of the uh, mount itself and it's just a little too close for comfort for me i don't have anything shorter uh, but these are the ones that are meant for it so i'm just going to reuse these pads as kind of like a spacer and that is actually giving it the right length once it's mounted into the motor um, and giving me that peace of mind i think this is going to look okay and kind of cool on top anyway so who cares so i'm going to roll with that but uh on to the next step all right so i think I need to change something before we move on. I'm actually going to need to resolder the capacitor underneath the board and then I'm going to have to swap out this XT60. I'm not really a big fan of the surface mounted one so I'm just going to put a regular one under here and then fish it up through this hole right here and then we'll be on to the next step. All right so we got that taken care of. That went pretty well. I've got the capacitor here now underneath and to the side. I'll zip tie that later and then I switched out a new uh, XT60 connector on top. That kind of helps keep it in place as well and then that's going to come up through the hole right here if I had wanted a panel mount XT60 and then standoff are right here and then once I put on the antenna holder that's going to lock it all into place. So I think I can start putting uh, the standoffs on around here and then the camera cage as well. So now I've got the standoffs on starting to take a little bit of shape here and we're going to add the camera cage here which is going to go to the front. So remember you got your two sides and I actually took uh, because I'm using a older Caddx Vista, it's only got one uh, camera hole on each side. So I have that inset towards the rear so that way the camera is not poking out the front of the camera protector here. And then all you're gonna do is just put this with these little gummies facing inside to make a little sandwich around this. So this is gonna go like this right here. So then you got something that looks a little bit like this with the camera cage. And then you're gonna take these gummies and then put them on the inside respectively. So now I think we're ready to mount the air unit on the base plate right here. So either side is exactly the same, it doesn't matter. Uh, the front where there are two holes right here, this is gonna be facing towards and mounting with the camera cage over here. So you just need to keep that in mind when you put it on top. I was initially thinking that I was gonna mount the air unit with the uh, USB mounted to the base plate or to that side, but it doesn't leave a whole lot of space to actually get a USB cord in there if you ever need to do any future updates. So I think I'm just gonna mount it like normal right here and uh, just cross my fingers and hope for the best. So we're on to the next step. I got the VTX set up to the base plate here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of space as to where you're gonna put your receiver. I've also got like a, a ViFly beeper as a beeper and just in case it gets lost. So I have a SpeedyB Bluetooth dongle right here. Uh, I just have that Velcroed here. I've got the receiver on the base plate facing towards the front. And I think I'm gonna fish it out through the top and then kind of zip tie it over where the camera is. Um, so I'm gonna start to put the prop guards on 
And then we'll put this down. We're also gonna put the little uh, bumper guards on there as well. And then we'll put the props on and then just kind of see where everything comes together. One last thing that I did create is with this uh, particular drone that I have here, it has the UFL to the RP SMA. So I have made a little 3D print for this. I'll put this down in uh, the link somewhere and you can uh, download this if you wanna have an RPA SMA. Otherwise, there's another one that was provided by Chris Rosser. If you have more of the regular uh, antenna that comes with the DJI air unit, there's this one as well. I did make some changes to his because I feel like the measurements were slightly off and now this fits a lot better. All right, so now we got the prop guards on and the bumpers here. So if you start with this, I recommend just doing the three outer screws to start. Otherwise, you're gonna have to come back and undo them when you put the bottom plate on here. Ask me how I know. But aside from that, everything's looking pretty good. Uh, remember, I do have a RPSMA to a UFL here. So this one's just a little bit long, so I'm gonna have to zip tie that to the frame here to keep it from popping up and getting clipped by the props here. And then as well, I have this beeper over here. I'm just going to fish this line up and I'll probably zip tie it uh, to this part of the frame and then put a piece of uh, uh, Velcro up here. But on the top plate, we're going to have a lot of real estate. So I think we're looking pretty good. I'm probably going to get put the props on and then we're going to finish up with just the battery, which is really easy right here. There's, you got this, you've got a couple of recessed screws and a couple of these spacers and then you'll have um, enough space to fish a battery strap underneath that. But yeah, I feel like a lot of the stuff, any extra bits and pieces, if you wanted them on your uh, drone would probably be put to the outside here and the upper part of the frame. All right, so I think we got this all done and buttoned up right here. We've got the battery strap on top and you can actually squeeze this underneath. It's gonna, you're gonna have to finagle it a little bit, but um, if you leave it loose and put your preferred battery strap under, it's probably recommended. Uh, I've got the beeper strapped to the top right here, and then I also created this GoPro mount on top out of TPU, which is actually going to hold the receiver antenna here in the front. So everything looks pretty good. I think it's all dialed in, and uh, now we're just ready to go take it for a flight and have a little bit of fun. But before we go, let's do a final weigh-in because the Pavo 30 Pro was 305 grams altogether. Now with this new build right here, we're coming in at 260 grams, so we're already saving 40 grams, but let's put on the battery strap right there, so 264 grams, which means, eh, you know, if you could fly it without a battery, you'd be under the 259 gram limit. Now, if I wanted to add in a naked GoPro, we could put that on, we're right at 323 grams, and then if I use an 856S battery, we put that on there, we're right around 475 grams total. If I'm just flying for funsies and I'm not gonna record anything, we're right back down to 415 grams. And then if you want something with a little more capacity, like a thousand milliamp battery right there, we're holding right around 431 grams just flying with the battery alone. And then if we put the Naked GoPro back in, 491 grams total. So at its max weight, we're right under 500 grams.